Here's your latest video from the field with Jeannie Falk Jones in K State Sunflower District Agronomy. We're going to discuss army cutworms in wheat. Here's an army cutworm feeding on leaf tissue of a wheat plant. Army cutworms begin feeding when it's above 32 degrees. Now scouting is important. They will likely not be found in treatable levels in every field. When scouting these pests, they're likely to be found in close proximity to grassy areas such as CRP and pasture. They prefer alfalfa and wheat, but have been found in triticale and other grassy spring crops. Larva damage first appears as a window pane cutout or square holes on the leaf. As larvae grow, they cut off the leaf tips when feeding, giving the wheat a real jagged appearance. There's only one generation of army cutworms per year. Now, economic thresholds can vary based on the wheat stand. For poor wheat, it is one to two army cutworm larvae per square foot. For good dryland wheat, it's four to five per square foot. And on excellent dryland or irrigated wheat, it's nine to ten of those one inch size larvae per square foot. Pesticides for treatment of the army cutworm can include the common ingredients found in Bathroid, Warrior, Proaxis, and Mustang. Now, army cutworms tend to burrow one to two inches into the soil during cold temperatures for some protection. So they're harder to get an accurate count on and harder to find during the cold parts of the day. After larvae have exhausted local food supplies, they may form an army and move in mass in search of other suitable food. If you have any questions, please contact your local extension offices or to get a hold of me, Jeannie Falk Jones, call the extension offices in Goodland, St. Francis, and Sharon Springs, or contact the K-State Experiment Station in Colby.